Well, almost a year ago, Annika Smithhurst's Canberra home was raided by the Australian Federal Police. Suddenly, the Walkley winning journalist found herself at the centre of a heated debate about press freedom in Australia. Annika Smithers is the national political editor for the News Corp Sunday titles and she's just written this compelling new book. It is called On Secrets about the lasting impact of the AFP raid on her personally and also on the wider media industry. And Annika joins us now from Canberra. Good morning. Great to see you. Great to be with you. And uh, firstly, tell us, recap the story that you wrote a year or so before the raid that triggered all of this in the first place. Yeah, it was two years ago I actually wrote the story that um, caused all of this, so it was a long time ago. Uh, it was about some proposed changes uh, that Home Affairs and Defence were discussing to basically turn a spy agency, the ASD, the Signals Directorate, which is usually looked at foreign threats, they wanted to change their remit to start to be able to have the powers to look at Australian citizens, and I found out about this and, and wrote about it, I think, in April 2018. Now, you, you write about, and it's something we've all felt as journalists, about the dread you felt on that Saturday night as that story was going to the printing presses uh, and you knew it would cause quite the ruction in the Canberra establishment. Yeah, perhaps not this much, Michael. I knew that it would, uh, it definitely would have ramifications. And, and the next morning, they, it didn't take long for them to launch, you know, an investigation. But as you'd know, uh, a lot of stories come out. There's investigations, and I guess they don't come back to haunt you in quite the way mine did so far after that the okay. publication. Let's fast forward a year or so since the story was published. It's the fourth of June, 2019, about nine o'clock in the morning. You're waiting for a carpet cleaner to come to your Canberra apartment. There's a knock on the door. Take us through what happens next. Well, because I anticipated someone coming to my house, that's right. I didn't actually look through the peephole. That's what they're there for. I will always do that now. But uh, look, there were five police officers um, standing outside my apartment. They had a copy of the story, um, a, a warrant, and they called for two more once they knew I was home. So then seven police came into my house and we sat around my dining table and I sort of thought this might take a few minutes, maybe half an hour, and I'll be able to get back to work. But of course, seven hours later, they were still there and um, we've only just wrapped up a High Court case and this case hasn't really progressed beyond that. No, no, I want to talk about that in a moment, uh, but uh, it's, it's quite a detailed account of what happened in those seven hours and you write about it, Annika, as al almost being a surreal experience as you watched these officers uh, trawl through your possessions. Yeah, and I guess one of the weird things was it was happening in real time. So the TV was on in my house and there was reporters out the front of my house reporting on what was happening inside, which is where we were. So um, watching strangers go through, you know, everything you own, things you don't even know your own, um, go through your bin and your fridge and, and things that, you know, seemed unnecessary on the day, it was... And it's really strange relationship. We, wanted, we occasionally had chats. Um, I spoke to them. Sometimes they were just, like general chats about the weather or the footy and then I'd sort of remind myself what they were doing there and, and pull myself into line but to stand with you know seven strangers and I had a couple of lawyers there and not say anything also felt terribly uncomfortable so it was trying to find this weird balance what to do with these people I've never had anything against the actual police in my house I didn't want them there but they were just doing their jobs they were doing their jobs so you mentioned uh, you had a, a bit of a victory with the high court ruling the the warrant for those raids was invalid you still sadly face the prospect of charges and you you finish the book by writing about where media freedom is in Australia and you make the point, and I think it's a valid one, the big challenge all of us have as journalists in trying to advocate for this is there's a general distrust out there, in most cases a misplaced distrust about journalists and the media generally. Yeah, I think we can take some responsibility for it, but all organisations and institutions are dealing with this trust deficit. And I think it's about media literacy too. I don't think a lot of people understand perhaps um, how stories come together and, and you know, how the media operates and, and that is our fault for not explaining that but I think because of that it's really hard to of course advocate advocate for sort of you know greater protections and freedoms for the press and I think the COVID-19 outbreak of his course set that back further but look you know we're not giving up and um, as, as much as you say I had a high court win it hasn't actually changed anything structurally which journalists still need to operate safely in this country. And all of us keep need to reinforce the fact that journalism Manica is not a crime. No. <laughs> Thank you very much and uh, keep punching. Appreciate it. Thanks.